We are gathered here today to advance solutions to today's recycling challenges. In addition to keeping valuable materials out of landfills, recycling supports more than 750,000 jobs and provides $6.7 billion annually in tax revenue. local governments, who are often stuck between vocal citizens who demand ever-increasing recycling goals and the practical reality of volatile commodity markets, and that recycling, although an essential public service, isn't free. We also heard a lot of, it's very confusing. Uh, even the avid recycler in the group was like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this, I don't know what to do with that, I don't know when it gets rinsed, I don't know where it goes. Um, so a lot of, it's too confusing. And our consumers tell us one thing, and that is they look for us to give them sustainable products and packages. While they're buying our products because they want them to perform, they look to us to design it properly for proper recovery and proper recycling. Plastic has value. We want it back. We don't want it on the beach. We shall not have to do beach cleanups. As I'm here from Procter & Gamble, many other brand companies would tell you the same message. The material has value. We'd like it back. And one way to bring it back is through collaboration. So I think that's the final message here is we need to collaborate together across the entire value chain. From the starting material side to the converters to the brand owners through the retailers and the post-consumer re recovery collection and re reclamation systems along with good policy. And when we answer each of those factors across the supply chain, we can all benefit. From an infrastructure perspective, we need to think about what is the future of packaging. Today, we're really focused on what we have today and what we can recycle, but if we want to get ahead and we want to lead, we need to work with those companies that are creating the future of packaging and understand how to create that infrastructure for tomorrow's package. Partnerships are a way that we can augment and amplify what each of us are doing. And in public education, that's probably one of the most critical as we're trying to understand uh, the role that millennials are playing in the future of recycling. It's a problem that is largely due to lack of infrastructure, uh, public education, and the appropriate policies on recycling. And I think this gets to this issue of uh, the value of the material that people have been talking about today. And helping us remember that recycling fits within a broader sustainability framework and that's very important for all sorts of resource management so thank you for that about the models that will take us into the future it may not be the models that have brought us to where we are today nobody wants materials to be wasted nobody wants an environment contaminated by plastic or paper or aluminum or glass uh, we, we want to all do better and so let's find ways to to capture the, the great energy of the moment um, uh, celebrate today as America Recycle State. Because something is recyclable doesn't mean it has a market to be recycled. How we measure recycling is something that we should be keeping in mind as we move forward on all these other areas about, around education and infrastructure. While recycling feels universal, the truth is only half of Americans can recycle at home as easily as they can throw something away. Those that do recycle, how much are we getting of their stuff? about half. So we're at half of a half. That means 20 million um, tons of materials getting disposed every year. What does 20 million tons mean? I, that came up earlier. Can we give a visual to that? Well, if we were able to recover, recover that, that'd be the same as taking enough cars off the road to more than circle the globe. We can make measurable change between now and next year in those four areas. In fact, we have to. Communities cannot bear the cost burden of recycling alone. They look to the companies, to governments, and to organizations like many of those in the room to help them, and help them we must. And we must do it quickly, because if we do not, they will not survive this economic blip, this, in, this blip for recycling, it will turn into something much more dire and we will have a bigger job on our hands. So, so where are we going with this? Obviously, we're gonna take as much as we can um, from what you've shared today. And we hope that the, together, among ourselves and with others who are interested in joining, over the next several months, we can develop a national action plan. 
Will it be perfect? No. But do we have a chance to just wait and do nothing? Absolutely not. At the same time, doing nothing is not an option because everybody signed that sheet that says you're going to do something. So you're already committed, as are we.